Welcome back to another video. As promised, we have more filming. So today we have a unusual day. It started off very cloudy. It almost was dark, like it was the end of the day and it was 10 a.m. I've been in this forest for about four hours now, capturing some drone footage and just having a little look around. And then the sky has lit up as you can see around me, you've got this magical light that's come out. So if you notice the contrast in drone footage, then <laughs> it's definitely the same day. And I'm here to improve my autumnal photography, get back into the flow of things and make the most of autumn, which is clinging on. So let's go. Halloween orange and moss green carpets the forest floor. Pockets of yellow trees with white stalks spring up to the sky and break the uniformity. Amongst the trees is a burnt orange hue of bracken, which is on its final turn. It transforms like a butterfly, its colours dazzling your eyes as you look over the forest bed. The once vibrant fresh green leaves and now rich, soft hue of burnt orange and brown. This is nature's fine tapestry, a patchwork quilt of colours that weave in and out of the landscape, covering the ground, wrapped up, cooking. Soak in that sun. Just take a minute, just take a minute. Let's <sighs> breathe in fresh air. Reset your body, your mind, and really take in where you are. I've framed up a shop behind me here, which is a collection of silver birch trees. This is a um, talking point that I wanted to introduce into my next few videos is how to compose photos. It's one of the biggest challenges for every photographer. Now, the way I approach it is uh, the tip from my most recent video, which is really get your head into nature, try and switch off if you can, go for a walk, um, explore the location and then get your camera out. So make sure that you're in the headspace where you can get um, the most concentration, the most um, insight to the forest or the landscape. Uh, it really does help if your head is in it. So that's the first tip. And the second one um, is looking at compositions within um, the landscape. You really have to look for things that make sense. 
So that could be lines of symmetry, uh, collections of shapes that stand out together, or they don't. Um, it could be um, the curliness of, a, of an oak tree against the straight trees in the background, the contrast of colour. Um, it can be many different things. Well, this one I want to talk to you specifically about how I am making a story out of these silver birch trees. So looking at behind me, this is all very busy. There's lots going on. So how do you compose this? The best thing to do is look for areas that make sense, or at least an area that has a collection um, of trees. So here, I've honed in, see where my camera is pointing, I've honed in on this collection here. Rather than trying to get everything in, which is only going to confuse the viewer, you want to hone in on one area that kind of makes sense. This is really good because you've got separation of the trees, which is what you want. You don't want everything clustered together. Uh, and there's enough of, of those trees to tell a story, um, that they're all growing together, there's different shapes, there's different um, ways that they're turning as they're growing into the light. So I really find this quite beautiful. The challenge is capturing this with setting sun because you've got blown out highlights here uh, which are capturing the side of the trees really well and it's something very different because normally I'm not shooting in direct sunlight as most of you know. So settings wise let's talk you guys through where I am. Now luckily today it is not windy which is what we love for landscape photography. I'm on 1 60th, get my words out, 1 60th of a second which is good because you don't get um, the movement of the leaves in the trees. Make sure you do some test shots with your shutter speed because any movement in the wind, those branches, those leaves are going to be blurry and they may spoil your shot. I have talked about that in the last couple of videos. Next, you're going to be on f11, which is a really good aperture, especially when you're shooting in woodland, because at least that way you get really good um, depth of field throughout your image. And finally, I want ISO 100. I try and keep that as low as possible, but usually I'm in between 100 to 400 ISO. So that's everything for this shot. Let's take the image and hope that I haven't blown out the highlights. If you all know me well by now, you'll know my weakness is lone trees. I just can't. So that was a dog and his owner that came through out of nowhere and scared me to death. Back to the lone tree. going to see my height difference now. This is my tripod and it's not fully extended so I'm quite short and for those of you who are tall you definitely have an advantage um, but I'm going to try and <laughs> make this work. So this tree, yes it's a lone tree, I have form for my lone trees but I just love them. I think if you are passionate about something and you enjoy shooting it, keep shooting it. Uh, this is stunning and the reason what's or the reason. What has drawn me to this image? Composition. 
let's bring it back to why we're here. So there's just this contrast of colour between the yellows, the greens, um, as they sit against this almost mauve purple background and then around the side you have these silver birch trees that are sort of um, shooting up alongside. Um, it's when you can isolate the lone tree is, is the perfection for me so I think this image is a guilty pleasure of mine. Let's hope we can capture it well and set up the settings. I can only do one thing at a time because this is so high but in order to get that separation this tripod doesn't go so high so I have to hold it but I can't change my settings and hold it at the same time. So I'll be right back. Un momento, por favor. I have tested a few photos. I really like this tree when it's slightly to the right of the composition. Now lone trees you have a habit of having them dead centre and they're the main focus of the image but that's quite typical of a lone tree and I as someone who shoots them quite frequently it's quite nice to um, isolate your subject but in a different way and have more substance to the image so this is uh, another tip on composition is you know, if your main focus is the tree um, break the cliche and have other things in the image that draw your eye so it doesn't actually have to be the, the lone tree that's the composition you've got other things at play here and I'll talk to you guys through what I mean now what I mean is you've got this tree here um, and then you have this collection of trees on the left. So I'm isolating this square here with the lone tree, tree slightly to the right and I just think that it makes a, a different composition. Um, it might not be the strongest but for me it's all about um, changing things up a little bit experimenting seeing how your eye draws you to different images if you can move left move right do it make sure you move yourself around with your camera to really get the best out of your composition uh, settings wise for this image I'm on f8 and the reason for that is that there is more leaves on this tree which means the light is gonna the wind is gonna come through whip up those leaves and cause motion so Having a lower aperture um, basically means that I can have a higher um, shutter speed um, or a shutter speed that's a little bit sort of faster to capture um, the leaves in motion. The darker I go on my eyes, um, the darker I go on my aperture, um, that's going to affect my shutter speed. So let's take this image and hope that it's a good composition. at that moment you realize where you messed up it's just dawned on me that the audio is not going to be very good on this video and I'm very sorry I do have a mic with me just didn't plug it in we live and we learn uh, <laughs> we live and we learn at least I haven't lost all the footage and I have some audio she's praised that I have audio um, I'm heading down to my next photo. Now I know this is here because one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is to take test photos at the locations that you go to. Um, I'm going to carry on with this audio because at least then it's consistent in the channel um, or in the video. Um, you don't have to keep turning your volume up and down. Now one tip a lot of photographers give, and this is one I'm going to give as well, is to take some test photos. So I'm going to put on the screen now some of the test photos I've taken from this woodland walk and I think that they're a really good way of um, scouting out the location, you get to see more you also don't tire out as easily I can hear some 
You also don't tire out as easily, so you get to see more, capture more. And also, um, it's just a good way of streamlining your trip so you don't get too exhausted carrying around all your camera kit. For me, I like to go out without my kit, take my drone, take some test photos, and then come back to those locations. So, that's what we're going to do now. When I came to this forest earlier in the day, it was very dark. And now, the light is on the horizon and it's backlighting all of this golden tree. Now, I've taken a test shot of this already, but I feel it's going to be wildly different now that the sun is setting. So I'm going to set up the shot before the sunset goes. Got to move quickly can't be talking about SD cards <laughs> like I did last time and miss the light but this is fleeting, this is a rush. Go, 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 go. It's almost gone. <laughs> eyes and toes crossed. Gosh, this light. <sighs> so what I'm doing is I'm going high shutter speed and then dropping it down just so I've got a range of exposures. You've got the golden light illuminating this beautiful tree. I'm going to show you. Just here all of this light that's setting and it's illuminating the tree and all the gold leaves and it just looks so stunning. I'll put you back so I can nail this shot. Absolutely breathtaking. Let me know the comparison of taking a test shot and then coming back with light. I can't wait to see the results and I can't wait to show you guys. Let me know what you guys think of before and after. Which do you prefer?
and the light's gone. That's how quick you have to be in landscape photography. Any delay and you could miss the shot. I'm glad we got that one. Hopefully. <laughs>